This is Carl from National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2023 Sunset Trail, model number 253RB. So we'll just look at some of the features here, okay? So as we move back to um, the door side uh, rear of the trailer, you can see we have uh, a power stabilizer jacks. One switch controls both rear, and then another switch that controls both front. Now, right here, you can hardly see it, but right here, there, that is the, the quick connect for the LP system. So when you pull your griddle out here, there's a hose somewhere here. It's probably back here where I can't see it. But anyway, there is a hose, and you can, that's how you get gas to the system, so you'll You'll plug it in right down there, and uh, when I say holes, I'm talking about an LP line, of course, and um, that's how you get gas to your griddle. You also have an outside refrigerator with out uh, with a kitchen or with a kitchen type sink. Okay, now this this is the water heater, but this is a on-demand water heater. So um, let's see if I can get an open one hand here. I might have to set the <laughs> there it goes. Okay, so that's an on-demand water heater. So it'll just give you a non-stop supply of water. I'll show you where the controls are inside the trailer, okay? <laughs> and of course storage up here. Make myself crazy here looking for the looking for the hose. There it is right there. Well, there it comes. Okay, so there it is. There is the uh, the LP hose. So you plug that male end in and into the female quick connect right there. Okay, long way to go, but I got there. Um, you have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers. This is a TV hookup outside. If you want to put a TV out here, you got. Uh, satellite and cable uh, antenna and um, power to, po to plug it in that is your furnace vent right there okay there's your front stabilizer switch this is your quick connect here uh, for water this one here can you be used for your stabilizers if they fail you can see this has got a cylinder with a slot cut in it let me see if I can get it over here. So if you look at, you go on the off door side and look at the stabilizers. You see that pin or that shaft with a pin through it? Well, that'll fit, this, this crank will fit right over that. So you can actually crank the stabilizers manually if you get into a trouble. So um, keep that in mind. You can always get them up or down. And then this crank here is for the power tongue jack. If the power tongue jack happened to fail, you can pull this plug right here, put that smaller crank right on there, and you can always get hits and unhits no matter what. So those are good features, obviously. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you have lights here. All right. Um, let me come over here while we're looking through the um, pass-through. So, this one has a solar panel. And there's your solar controller, and it has an inverter, okay? So inversion, let's go up here. You, you requested two 6-volt batteries wired together as 12-volt, okay? Which is the best way to do it because you get more storage. Just so you know, this is the kill switch for your battery right here, right? Um, and there is uh, another kill switch. Uh, for your inverter. Anyway, the inverter uh, inverts 12 volt DC to 110 AC. So inside the trailer there are going to be, um, I'm not sure, I haven't been in this one yet, but um, there, the power will be inverted. And uh, there'll probably be a remote switch in there, but we'll look and see. I should have looked first, I guess. But um, So 
so this does both. It can, this trailer converts power. I'll show you the power converter inside. The power converter converts AC to DC power. This inverter inverts DC to AC power. So it'll take your 12 volts from your battery and it will turn it into AC current for you. Okay, we're well, a long way to tell you that. You probably, you bought it, so I'm sure you know all this already anyway. But, all right. Um, this, uh, I don't know if you can see it here. I can light it up. This tells us right now we're getting 8.2 amps from the sun, right? So that's what we're gaining and storing into our battery. If you push the button B again, you got 100%. You got 92 amp hours. And right now, 14.0 volts in the battery system, which is perfect. Um, so there, it gives you four different readings from there. If I hit it again, it'll go back to what we gained from the sun, 8.1. You see a picture of the sun in the air tw pointing towards the solar panel. Um, so keep that in mind. That's, this is always going to be charging your battery. Uh, and depending on what, what the conditions are outside, the position of the sun in the sky, the weather, uh, all that stuff, time of day, it will, it will vary, of course. Um, uh, if this flashes FUL and flashes, I keep flashing on and off FUL, it's not broke. It's telling you that the batteries are totally charged and there's no place else to store any energy. So it just will not convert anything. It will not, it will not do the photovoltaic thing. So the, um, as soon as the, the level of your batteries drop, then it'll go right back to these screens, the normal ones, when it starts storing energy in your batteries again. But if it gets totally full or topped off or whatever you want to call it, um, it'll flash FUL and you'll see it flashing. So, okay? All right. Okay, so this is this is your water here. Um, your city water is the most common way to get water to the trailer. You're just going to hook the hose up there, turn it on, you're all set. If you're camping boondocking somewhere, where where you don't have any city water you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and you pre-fill it and then you use the onboard 12 volt pump to pump the water okay I'll show you that where the pump switch is when we get inside but so you have two ways you have regular city water which is very common and then if you're boondocking or any place that doesn't have uh, city water you can pre-fill your fresh water tank and just pump it right out of the tank everything all the plumbing will work as though you have city water but you'll just be pumping it from your holding tank, okay? This is the black tank flush right here. So after you dump your black tank, uh, you pull the, pull the gate valve and leave it open. Then you come over here and you hook the hose at your dump station right out of here and turn it on. That'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing, and do a really good good job. So if you've got a working... Uh, if you got a working hose at, at the dump station, the hose hasn't been run over or anything yet, you can put it right on there and flush out your tank. It's a good thing to do, okay? All righty. Just so you know, this type of slide room is called an AccuSlide. You can tell by the four cables, two on each side. All right, in case you need to know that. This is a 50 amp system. So you have your 50 amp 30 foot cord, and then you see there's an adapter right here so you can adapt it down from 50 to 30 amps right is it called a dog bone and then we give you another little little acorn type deal that will convert or will uh, yeah will convert your your 30 amp plug down to a 20 so you can actually plug it in no matter what of course you can't run air conditioning off of 20 but you can you can light up the trailer do everything you need to do so um, we give you both those uh, both those devices to uh, to reduce the 50 amp cable down Okay, so first of all, you can see at the top of the ladder, this tells us it's pre, this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So that's a Furion camera. Uh, you can see the, uh, the housing is there. So if you choose to, to get a camera, just make sure you get one that fits in that housing, okay? Um, we have a, a ladder, which makes it really easy to inspect the roof. The manufacturer states every 60 days you should inspect your roof. So you always want to keep after it. Look at the sealant, make sure there's no cracking or separation where water can get in. You're going to look at the uh, roofing attachments and roofing material, make sure they weren't damaged by low branches or road debris. Inspecting your roof should just be part of your, your regular trailer maintenance. It should be part of your routine. So 
if you keep up on it and keep checking it, odds are, odds are years could go by before you have to do anything, but you don't know. That's why you're inspecting it. So you're just protecting your investment, so it's a good thing to do, okay? If you see an issue, take care of it immediately. All right, so this is, a, this is where that sprayer plugs in. This, which is locked right now, but all that's behind here are, um, are your uh, hookups, your campground cable, uh, satellite, that sort of thing, okay? All right, so let's go inside. All righty. Let's, let me look around a second here. I'm thinking that to when it comes to your inverter, it does have a button on the face of it, right? And then you have that that uh, that uh, kill switch, the big red one. I'm thinking that's how you're going to turn that on and off because there's no reason to be inverting power all the time, right? You only invert it when you need it. Uh, so um, I think um, I think you will use the button on the uh, that's on the device itself, or and or the the red kill switch that's up there. Okay. All right. So here we go. Your TV is more than just a TV, okay? It's a FM radio. It has Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly with your, for your phone or tablet, whatever. You got two speaker zones. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. You got HDMI on the front and rear in case you need to go into the TV with a, with a Blu-ray player or something like that, okay? And it also is on a, a swing-out bracket. Uh, this is your control panel here, so you have... Um, your slide room right here and then this is for your awning never leave the awning out unattended of course if you're not going to be at the campsite roll it in you have lights here um, your awning light uh, this has tank heaters so it basically they're high heating pads on the bottom of your tanks and there's, there's a smaller one around the the elbow by the valve um, so it extends your camping season when you turn them on like that um, your water pump is right here. We talked about the water pump. Uh, uh, when you're pumping water out of the fresh water tank, you'd use that. You also use the water pump to winterize the trailer. All right. Uh, battery is totally charged. Fresh water is empty. Black is empty. No black too, so you disregard it. So on and so forth. Um, it'll graduate up as it fills. Okay. All righty. The refrigerator is a 12 volt. DC compressor refrigerator. So it's a compressor refrigerator like you have at home, but it runs on 12 volts DC. Okay. Um, microwave works like any other microwave. Range hood with a fan and a light, of course. Now your range itself, you have a two piece glass top on it. Okay, so you have the three, these three knobs are for, for the three burners. This is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark it. And this is for the oven. So let's, I don't know if he's got the gas turned on here. We'll find out. Yeah, he does. So it's that simple. All right. Now, when it comes to your, your oven, let me just look here to see if there's what happens down here. I can't tell. Okay. Well, either way, you use the oven knob. You go to the picture of the flame, which means pilot light. You depress it. Keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure. Then you're going to um, you're going to light it, and once you see the pilot light light, you still hold it for another 10 or 15 seconds afterwards to heat up the thermocouple. Then you can go to regular whatever temperature you want. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, of course, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. All right. Always travel with this closed. Now I showed you the inverter, the power inverter outside. This is the power converter. This does just the opposite. The inverter goes from DC to AC. This one goes from AC to DC. So for this to work, come on now, there we go. For this to work, you have to be plugged in to shore power, obviously. So you'll be plugged in, and this on this side, you have 110 AC circuit breakers like you'd have at home. And uh, they're also they're labeled, right? So that's the AC power. Then it's converted to 12 volt DC on this side. So you got you got 12 volt fuses here, and they're all labeled. Okay. If any of these fuses were to blow, you'll actually see them glowing through this um, through this uh, tinted plastic there. 
but importantly this is also a battery tender so it'll as long as you're plugged into shore power it'll sense how much energy your battery uh, has and needs up front I'm talking about your two six volt batteries I should say your batteries and it'll always keep them charged up so it'll sense if they're low it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs um, if they're topped off it'll just trickle a couple amps to maintain it um, so when when you're plugged in this will charge your battery along with the solar panel uh, when you're pulling down the road your tow vehicle's alternator will send power through the charge line and keep your battery charged along with the solar panel so um, you have your solar panel the the tow vehicle and the power uh, converter all will to charge your battery all right okay so when I said there was a, there may be a switch for the inverter in here um, I'm revising that there's not it's actually in the in that compartment okay all righty let me see what else we have here this is this is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector right here it should always be green like it is if not you want to get it serviced um, it, if it goes off it's detected carbon carbon monoxide or LP gas right so you take everybody outside leave the door open shut the gas up in the front figure out what's going on okay also, if it beeps very slowly, the same tone but very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So if your battery ever gets low for whatever reason, it's going to warn you. I'll let you hear it going through the tests here. LP is good. Carbon dioxide coming up. Okay, and then low battery alert. And back to green. Like I said, it should always be green. If not, get it serviced. Okay. So, here we go, get this away. Always keep this latched with this when you're traveling. Or, uh, that's important because sometimes they'll, they will break up, even though it does have a magnetic strip on it. So the shower works like any other shower. The sink works like any other sink. This is a GFCI plug. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, so if you're using the plug outside and it pops, you're going to reset it here. Now this, it doesn't sense any water right now, so I can't get it to turn on. But once it senses water, I can turn this on. This is the, the um, on-demand water heater. It's very simple. You basically have on and off, and then you're going to set your temperature there. And it's just going to always give you a stream of flow of hot water as you demand it, okay? Um, the toilet is an RV toilet, so um, it's got a flush pedal right here. It sits right over the black tank. That's antifreeze coming out right there because we're winterized. Black tag was directly below. So the thing is, you can't you can't use this an RV toilet. You can't use it dry. By dry, I'm talking about the black tank directly below. If you do use it dry with no chemical or water in it, the smell will be super terrible, and it also can get clogged up. So um, you always want to make sure when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You'll put a dose of chemical in there, and then you'll step on the pedal and hold it down till at least a gallon of water goes in there with the chemical. Uh, don't use this less than a gallon and you can use more if you want to it's up to you but um, you always got to have water and chemical in there when you start using it you can't use it dry if you do you'll only do it once trust me uh, and of course you have a fan there also skylight up there okay let's see what else we have here I think I've gone over everything up in here let me look around you can drop this, this um, table down onto these cleats right here and use the back cushion to fill in the space and you have a bed here right these are your keys this is the battery for your smoke detector and this is the remote for your TV slash Bluetooth radio slash uh, whatever um, two theater seats in this one you have storage underneath the bed here I can't, I don't know if I can get it up with one hand, but yeah, you got storage under there. Um, TV hookups here, right? So uh, you can put a bracket, there's a backing plate here, that's what this sticker's telling us. You can put a swing out bracket so you can watch it from bed if you want. Um, and uh, of course you have your escape window, which works like this. Has this part and I'll be all set if I can do it. Oh, sorry about the camera work. Hold on, please. Okay. So 
you just push it all the way through and you go all the way through with it. And then you grab this knob and pull the screen out and you can escape in an emergency that way, okay? It's really the... Okay. Alrighty. So, you have sliding doors here, of course. Two of them. You have a kind of a closet slash pantry right here. Okay. Alright, so I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, all your literature for, for all the components of the trailer are in here. So you can always read up on things. If you need to, just get the device names off of uh, whatever you're looking at, whatever appliance or device you're looking at. And they'll for sure have some kind of manufacturer's videos you can look at also. So keep that in mind, please. Okay, so thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, please remember what I said about inspecting your roof. Uh, that should be part of your regular maintenance. It's important. And uh, right now this trailer is winterized, so the water's been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze. And so you're all set till, till the springtime comes, okay? Thank you very much.